this is a very, very spoiler laden video. <laughs> I finished reading all of the R.L. Stein cheerleading books that I had. I guess there was a fifth one, but my library does not have that one, so I only read the four. One of them, that last one, The Super Chiller, I had never read before, or at least, you know, reading it this time, I had no recollection of ever having read it before. So I'm just going to start and talk about how I cannot believe that these have not yet been turned into a movie. I mean, with all the remakes, with all the like reboots and stuff going on, there is a ton of just untapped brilliance with R.L. Stein Fear Street books. Like, it boggles my mind. And I will look, but I swear these have not been made into movies. I have not found any evidence of it and I'm gonna have to do another search to make sure but these are made for movies. Just wanted to get that out there first. So the first evil is by far my favorite. I think it is the best of the bunch. It focuses mostly on Bobby and she actually dies in this one so she's only around for the first book and then it basically follows her sister Corky through the rest. Corky is a mainstay in the rest of the books. This one she's not in it very much. Corky is kind of like a, a little afterthought. So this one there is a very movie type scene with a bus accident that kills a cheerleader and she is reanimated by an evil spirit that possesses her once she lands on the grave of this this person who had died a long time ago. So right there you've got action. Um, another great scene is the girl who had this accident is pretending to be paralyzed and so she's in a wheelchair and at one point Bobby is leaving her house at night and she sees some shadowy movement because the light is on in the living room and the girl has the curtains drawn and she stands up because she can walk and Bobby can see this all from the driveway and she's just completely floored because you don't expect a paralyzed person to get up out of their wheelchair and start pacing around the room. So I really liked that. That would be a great movie scene. Bobby's death in the shower is pretty it's not gruesome but it is horrifying it's a pretty horrifying way to die and scalding hot water all the, the faucets turn on um you know the characters are pretty one-dimensional i think this one is the most believable in the way that other people act in it that changes as the series progresses. There's a lot of high school drama in these books. There's a lot of backstabbing. There's a lot of um, just like overly dramatic, why were you talking to her? You're dating me type stuff. The big dramatic scene at the end where Corky fights um, the possessed cheerleader, Jennifer the reanimated cheerleader and the other cheerleaders witness this so they are also privy to the evil spirit and they know what they're dealing with at this point so I think that was kind of necessary because someone has to know and it's not going to be the adults the adults never know the adults are completely useless in these books they do not raise any questions about all the deaths they think everyone must be very accident prone and unlucky so that's the first book. Really like the first book. Then we have The Second Evil. And this one, it's a little less exciting. There is, I don't know, I don't, I don't find that there are many movie type moments in it. And 
we get a big reveal at the end that the evil spirit did not go into the grave with the body of Seraphir, but instead it went into Kimmy and she tries to drown Corky at the end of this book and Corky ends up drowning the evil spirit out of Kimmy. So that's something too, like in this book we hear the history of Seraphir, which is the grave that Jennifer died on in the first book and then the evil spirit who had been in Seraphir goes into Jennifer, makes her evil and then Corky bites her and puts the evil spirit back into the, the grave, or so we think. But really, the evil spirit has been in Kimmy the whole time. Kimmy remembers nothing once she's possessed. She didn't remember anything. It's like a complete blank for her. And it gets drowned and then there's a note that shows up telling Corky that it can't be drowned. The evil spirit can't be drowned. So the evil spirit stuff's a little inconsistent because the evil spirit drowned with Seraphir, waited around in her grave for someone to release it. And Kimmy did not have to die in this in order for the spirit to come out of her. And it's just floating around down the water filtration system, I guess. And then we have the third evil, which is the one that I remembered the most. I remember rereading this one more than any of the others. And this time the evil is actually inside Corky. So I really like that because, you know, it's, these are mostly about Corky. So it's interesting that she's the one who's possessed this time. But in a different way from Kimmy, Corky begins to realize that she is possessed. She knows that she is the one. The evil spirit seems to be giving her breaks so that she she is herself again for brief periods of time. So that's a little bit different and I guess it's probably a plot device. And I really like the fact that she has flashbacks to Seraphir. She has like Seraphir's memories in here and she finds out how Seraphir ended up killing the evil spirit, which was intentionally drowning herself in Fear Lake. And she decides that she has to do that herself. So she tries to drown herself and it works. Kimmy pulls her out of the water to save her and she revives her eventually. So the evil spirit has gone into the lake but Corky is alive. And then that's it. Well, these books are pretty ridiculous in the way that they treat death, I guess, because people, I mean, there aren't so many, I seem to remember a lot more people dying in these books than actually died. And there are some, but people don't seem as upset about them. Like very little time elapses and people are just fine again. Um, Bobby dies, Corky's sister, and their parents are just fine after that. Like Corky and her brother, I mean Corky does talk about how you know she misses her sister and she thinks about her all the time and she's sad but she joins the cheerleading. She doesn't have like this period of depression or extended mourning or anything like that and her parents, having lost a child, they seem very blasé, they seem very lax in their um, keeping track of Corky. Um, after certain accidents happened, there was a girl said something about it was too late to call their parents after they went to this tournament and a coach, a basketball coach, had been murdered. They're like, oh, it's too late to call our parents, they won't come get us. It's like, uh, I'm sure if you asked your parents to come get you because someone has been murdered and you're upset, they would do it. So just little stuff like that. And then we've got this other one, Cheerleaders, The New Evil. This is the super chiller. This is the one that I really have no recollection of. And they have switched up a few of the characters. They got rid of a girl who had been in all three of the books and they got rid of their cheerleading coach. She's a different person than this one. And 
not many people die and the girls think that the evil spirit has come back but in reality it hasn't come back and then they do this like spell because uh, Deborah has been into the occult and they do a spell and it actually releases the evil spirit so they did it and then they just kind of like pretend that that didn't happen they they're like oh we did this terrible thing but you know we'll just ignore it and things will get better somehow because you know that always seems to happen so in this one the evil spirit infects a whole bunch of people like a whole group of kids and so Corky ends up driving them off of a cliff into the icy lake and they drown or at least they drown enough for the evil spirit to be ejected so I don't know what's going to happen in the fifth one but obviously the evil spirit they keep saying it can be drowned but obviously not because it just keeps coming like the energizer bunny this evil spirit is not going away and it seems to like these people and there was just there was this really funny I think it was in the third yes it was in the third one Corky has decided that she needs to kill Deborah and it, it mentioned that she drove to the mall where she was going to kill she was going to run Deborah over with a car in the parking lot and on her way she stops to let this woman shopper with a full cart pass by her it's just so funny how selective this evil spirit is it doesn't want to kill a whole bunch of people it just has a goal it wants to kill certain people and then it you know it makes its attempt and the evil spirit isn't even very great at killing people there have been lots of failed attempts and then no other attempts are made after that um so my favorite character probably is quirky because these are mostly about her but it is kind of funny some of the dialogue, some of the um, ways that these people act. I like in the second one how you're faked out. I remember reading it and like I couldn't remember who was possessed that time and it wasn't because I was thinking it was either Kimmy or Deborah. I knew it was one of those two and I was actually kind of surprised at the last minute when I was like oh yeah it's got to be Kimmy and poor Kimmy she doesn't make it through the series she ends up dying in the fourth one and it was like very Kimmy's dead Corky's cracking jokes you know Corky laments she says something about her friend being dead and then she cracks a joke afterward and um her boyfriend Alex who had been possessed he's like oh yeah by the way Kimmy's dead just like very whatever so I don't know I think it's Kind of funny all these little things so yeah all in all great reads I think they would make terrific movies and I think someone should get on that because why not I mean these the books are perfect for movies they are like screenplays I think you know there's not a lot of exposition it's very um the characters are just very kind of like in horror movies where you don't have a lot of character development for most people you know they're just like there to be there so all in all i still recommend these books i think they're great fun um i would read them again you know and they hold up as an adult, I do find a lot of things are just kind of like, why don't you tell someone about this? Or get your parents involved? Or what are you thinking? You can't ignore this. Bad things are happening. Like, you know, that kind of stuff. But I definitely think give them a read. Go check these out. Go check out other R.L. Stein books. The Fear Street books are wonderful highly recommend them and maybe I'll do some more reviews in the future about these books have a spooky day